the medicinal garden of the Royal College of Physicians, Regent's Park, London. This medicinal garden contains 1,100 species of plants that have been used in medicine over the last 5,000 years. Some commemorate famous physicians. The garden includes medicinal plants that were recorded in the college's Pharmacopoeia londinensis and it features specimens from across five different continents. The college's Pharmacopoeia londinensis was published in 1618. It lists the ingredients and their proportions in Latin that the Royal College of Physicians ordered by law for the apothecaries to use in making up their medicines. Culpepper's first book, a physical directory or a translation of the dispensatory made by the College of Physicians of London of 1649, translated the medicines and plants in the college's pharmacopoeia into English and added their uses. His other books on the medicinal uses of plants are still in print today. Together, the plants growing here represent the medical beliefs and practices of past ages and show how use of plants to make medicines has progressed into the 21st century. Plants have been used for millennia as a source of food, medicine and vitamins, but their properties took a long time to understand. Medical thinking was dominated by a belief that hot and cool plants could counter illnesses and that the creator gave plants a colour and shape that suggested the body part that they could treat. Real medical discoveries were made almost accidentally and were often not understood at first. Modern medicines are made by extracting chemicals from the plants, purifying them and testing them in the search for ways these chemicals can be used to kill cancer cells, for example, or improve the treatment of other medical conditions. The garden is divided into zones and the plants within them are labelled so that you can explore by yourself. But please remember that to survive, plants had to deter animals from eating them, so most are toxic if eaten. Many plants are hazardous to humans and very few are edible. Toxins can be absorbed through the skin, so please don't touch any of the plants in this medicinal garden. The sap of this garden plant, Podophyllum spotty dotty, like the wild species from which it was bred, contains a powerful toxin which can be absorbed through the skin and cause vomiting. However, the sap can be used to treat viral warts and the chemicals within have been converted into anti-cancer drugs to treat sarcomas and lung cancer. This one, however, Artemisia annua, has long been used by the Chinese as a herbal tea for a remedy against fevers. But in the last 30 years, the important new drug to treat acute attacks of malaria has been isolated from it. Artemisinin and synthetic derivatives like artemisate are now hugely important in controlling this deadly disease. Spotty Dotty and Artemisia are both great examples of how plants used in herbal medicine can now be used in modern medicines with far greater power. Plants have been used in medicines really from the earliest time and uh, 5,000 years before Christ there, is, there was a cave in Spain which was uh, occupied by primitive people and they had opium because the seed heads have been found there. So we know that some plants been used medicinally now for 7,000 years. People believe that all the plants were put on the planet in an instant of time by the Creator. And uh, the Creator was a charitable man and he um, signed or indicated by the shape or colour of the plant what they were to be used for. An example is this plant here, which has a leaf with three lobes. And the liver has three lobes and therefore it was thought to be signed by the Creator to indicate it should be used for liver disorders and 2,000 years ago it was called Hepatica. And it stayed as being a treatment for liver disorders and jaundice until the 1880s when in Canada they started to make liver tonics to cure liverishness out of this and people were taking a bottle a, a week of this and went down with jaundice. It's hepatotoxic so Creator may have signed it but we didn't read his handwriting properly. And another plant which has been used really for 2,000 years um, is this plant here with a leaf which was supposed to show uh, or a representation of the cut surface of the lung and therefore was used for pulmonary disorders. Um, I think they realised it didn't work very well and they probably used it as a hot poultice to apply to areas of pleurisy on the chest which like a hot water bottle would have worked. 
Lemons were first realized to be useful for treating scurvy in the mid 18th century. Uh, Dr. Lind uh, proposed uh, an experiment and he treated people with scurvy with vinegar or lemons or oranges or other things and, and found that those who were given lemons and oranges within 10 days the scurvy disappeared. William Withering, a GP, was wandering about and he found a lady in the 1750s who was dying of heart failure, which was called dropsy in those days. And uh, he, he, she was very far gone. He wasn't going to treat her because he knew she was going to die. And he came back a week later and she was cured. All the fluid retention from heart failure, all the swollen ankles, swollen abdomen, lungs full of water, had all disappeared. And she'd been given a mixture of 20 different herbs by a Shropshire lady herbalist. And he knew 19 of them, but the 20th was foxglove. And foxglove was never used in medicine because it was so dangerous and so powerful a, a, a poison and made people vomit and die. And so he experimented for a dozen years on his national health patients, his charity patients, while his private patients still got the usual stuff, and found that a small dose of foxglove leaf would make uh, people pass a lot of water. He thought it was a diuretic, didn't realise it made the heart beat stronger. He found all the side effects of foxglove, all the problems that came with it, and then gradually over the years people extracted digoxin, the active chemical which stimulates the heart to beat stronger from the leaf and then now they synthesize it, they make it entirely artificially and don't need any foxglove leaves. And the human body, Hippocrates said, was made up of the same four elements in a different form and they were the four humours. There was the hot, fiery, choleric humour represented by the blood, the cold, blue, phlegmatic, watery humour represented by phlegm and nasal drips, yellow bilious humour represented by the colour of one's vomit and the black melancholic humour represented by the colour of one's bowel motions. So if you went out in the rain on a cold wet day you'd absorb the cold wet humour and then you would element and then you would have an excess of the cold wet humour, the cold wet phlegmatic humour, you'd cough up phlegm, you'd have a runny nose, you'd have a cold and you'd go indoors and you'd put on a red dressing gown because that was hot would be transmuted into your soul and reverse the effects of the cold, cold watery humour. You'd have a hot drink, hot room, something strong, a spice in it. The sort of spices are things like uh, chilies, a good hot curry, because spices are hot whatever their temperature. And if you had a fever, then you want to take cold refreshing drinks like pomegranate, which is why the pomegranate is on the college coat of arms. But they also they knew there were certain plants which if you ate them, like this one, which is deadly nightshade, Atropa belladonna, named after the Greek fate who uh, cut the thread of life. If you ate this, you died and you became cold. So this was regarded as a cold medicine. The Royal College of Physicians Medicinal Garden in Regent's Park is open to the public on weekdays throughout the year. To find us, book a group tour and for more information, visit our website.